This country is home to one of the largest fetish markets in the world. The market sells various items used in traditional religious practices, including animal parts, herbs, and charms. Hello, welcome to Open Tierra. Today we are exploring Togo, a West African country known for its diverse culture, rich history, and vibrant landscapes. Join us and stay to learn more about Togo's geography, history, and culture. Togo is a small West African country located in the Gulf of Guinea. With an area of about 57,000 square kilometers, or 22,007 square miles, it borders Ghana to the west, Burkina Faso to the north, and Benin to the east. Togo has a diverse geography consisting of low plains, hills, plateaus, and lagoons along the southern coast. It can be divided into four main geographical regions. The low-lying plains stretch along the southern coast and are covered by lagoons and lakes, such as Lake Togo. North of the coastal plains are the rolling Kapeti Hills and the Akpaso Plateau, with an average elevation of 600 meters, or 1,968 feet. In the central part of Togo lies the Oti Plateau and Oti Valley. The Atakora Mountains in the northwest reach elevations over 900 meters or 2,952 feet and contain Togo's highest point, Mont Agu at 986 meters or 3,234 feet. The main river systems in Togo flow southward from the central mountains to the sea. The Mano River forms part of the border with Benin in the east. Lake Togo, which is a lagoon, stretches for over 40 kilometers or 24 miles along the coast and is an important feature for fishing and transport. Togo is home to over 8 million people from different ethnic, religious, and linguistic backgrounds. The origins and movements of various groups over the centuries have contributed to Togo's diverse population and cultures. The largest ethnic groups in Togo are the Ewe, Kabye, Tem, and others such as the Akposo and Ana. The Iwi reside predominantly in the south and make up about 21% of the population. They arrived from Nigeria many centuries ago. The Kabye people live mainly in the northern and central areas of Togo and comprise about 23% of the population. Migrants introduced Islam to the Kabye in the 17th century. The Tem, who migrated from Ghana, represent about 6% of Togo's people and inhabit the central region. Many native religions originated in Togo, while Islam and Christianity arrived later with settlers, traders, and missionaries. Indigenous beliefs remain for some, while over half the people are now Christian, and about 20% Muslim. People following traditional African religions make up most of the remainder. The South tends to be more Christian, while there are higher concentrations of Muslims in northern cities. French is the official language taught in schools and used in government, but indigenous languages dominate in homes and villages. Ewe and Kabye are the most common native languages in the South and North. The Tem speak Tem. Many also speak African trade languages like Hausa and some English and German. Togolese cuisine features flavorful dishes that blend elements from various cultures. Staple ingredients like corn, plantains, cassava, and yams are grown locally and incorporated into meals and side dishes. Let's explore some highlights of Togolese food. A popular dish called akume is made from corn dough mixed with wood ash. The paste can be eaten plain with vegetables or served with an oil-based sauce. It has a smooth texture and slightly salty taste from the ash. Fufu is a staple made by boiling and pounding a starchy ingredient like yams, plantains, or cassava into a thick, doughy paste. It soaks up the flavors of soups and stews 
and is eaten by hand using some of the sawa to mold a small ball which is dipped before eating. Ayimulu, this Togolese vegetable stew, contains ingredients like eggplant, spinach, okra, and tomatoes simmered in palm oil. Variations might have meat or fish added. It is typically served with a starch like fufu, rice, or akume to enjoy the rich, savory sauce. A popular maize or cassava-based side dish, genkume is steamed in leaf wrappers making it similar to tamales. Peanut sauce or spinach is sometimes added before wrapping this cornmeal cake. It makes a hearty, moist, and flavorful accompaniment to meals. Various kingdoms and ethnic groups have traded, settled, and battled for control of the region that is now Togo. Colonial powers and movements for independence have also impacted Togolese history over time. The Yua and Mina ethnic groups were likely the first inhabitants in the region. By the 15th century, several small kingdoms developed inland, while trading posts were established along the coast. European traders arrived by sea, exchanging goods for slaves and agricultural products. Eventually, the powerful kingdom of Dahomey conquered most of what is now Togo. In 1884, Togo became a protectorate of Germany, called Togoland. Germany instituted colonial infrastructure and expanded the export economy using forced labor. After World War I and Germany's defeat, Togoland was partitioned, the western portion to Britain and east to France. French Togoland saw some reforms but faced economic struggles during the Great Depression. Efforts to unite British and French Togoland began in the 1940s, along with calls for independence led by Sylvanus Olympio. He formed the Committee for Togolese Unity and gained election as Prime Minister when French Togo became self-governing. On April 27, 1960, the Unified Republic of Togo gained full independence with Olympio serving as its first president. Togo has a small open economy that relies heavily on trade and developing its key industries. Major exports drive economic growth, but many Togolese also engage in subsistence farming and fishing. Despite periods of instability, Togo aims to expand economic opportunities for its growing population. Its main industries include phosphate mining, agriculture processing, and cement production. Phosphate is the most valuable export, along with cotton, cocoa, and coffee. The major market is with countries in the European Union. While adequate infrastructure exists near the capital, improving transportation networks could facilitate exports and regional trade. About 65% of the 11 million residents are of working age. An estimated 36% are involved in the industrial and service sectors, demonstrating progress in job growth and productivity. However, unemployment remains relatively high at an estimated 16%. Many still work in the informal economy, especially in family-based agriculture and fishing. Togo has undertaken key economic reforms and development initiatives aimed at reducing poverty and improving lives. Yet, political uncertainty, heavy debt burdens, and impacts from global downturns impede lasting progress. Dependence on a few vulnerable exports leads to price fluctuations. Expanding the private sector, agricultural capacity, and education can make growth more resilient. Today, their GDP sits at $8.4 billion. Togo has a rich and vibrant culture that has been shaped by its diverse ethnic groups. One integral part of Togolese culture is the traditional African religion of voodoo. This ancient practice has influenced various aspects of life in Togo, including the famous fetish markets. Voodoo originated in West Africa thousands of years ago and continues to be widely practiced in Togo. 
It involves belief in a supreme creator along with lesser deities and spirits that can influence people's lives. Voodoo also incorporates the use of rituals and objects believed to have spiritual powers that communicate with the world of the spirits. In day-to-day -day life in Togo, Voodoo maintains a strong presence. Many people wear protective amulets and consult both traditional healers and Voodoo priests when illness strikes. It is common to see small Voodoo shrines dotted around villages and cities. Voodoo also plays a role in festivals, rites of passage, and historic traditions linking Togolese culture to the past. One of Togo's most well-known fetish spots is the Akodasawa Market, located in Loam. This hugely popular market teems with rows of stalls brimming with all kinds of mysterious ingredients meant to serve the diverse needs of voodoo adherents. Visitors gaze upon animal parts like leopard skulls, black cat heads, vulture feet, and hyena skin. They can also observe traditional herbal extracts, potions, and talismans prepared by renowned priest healers who practice their rituals secretively behind the stalls. The pungent smells, intriguing displays, and loud bargaining offer an utterly immersive cultural experience. Locals and tourists alike will gain insight into ancient beliefs still thriving through the vast array of fetishes radiating spiritual resonance according to practitioners from this strange yet captivating market. If you enjoyed this video on Togo, you'll love this next one.